This tutorial is all about ionic compounds. An example of an ionic compound might be, for example, here on the left, sodium chloride or common salt, or on the right, copper sulfate, CuSO4. So what are the properties of these ionic compounds and how are they related to the fact that they're made of ions? What are their structures like and what sort of properties do they give in terms of, for example, whether they conduct electricity or not and their melting and boiling points? That's what we're looking at in this tutorial. So lots of syllabus content, both at foundation level, here shown in the white, and at higher level, here in the purple. The difference between the two is that although at foundation level you just have to recall facts, at a higher level you need to be able to explain those properties in terms of the structure and bonding of, for example, sodium chloride or uh, magnesium oxide. One of the properties of sodium chloride that you need to know is in terms of whether it conducts electricity. A fairly typical experiment is to put some solid sodium chloride into a beaker and see if it conducts electricity. Well, it doesn't. Solid sodium chloride doesn't conduct electricity. You then add some water and stir it to dissolve the sodium chloride. The solution you find actually does conduct electricity. The same can be said for various ionic compounds. Generally speaking, ionic compounds don't conduct when they're solid, but do when they're dissolved in water, and indeed do when they're molten. In other words, heated up so much that the uh, ions are able to be separated. Now, why is this? Well, when we look at the structure of sodium chloride, we see that there is a giant structure of sodium and chloride ions. Each sodium ion being surrounded by six chloride ions and each chloride ion being surrounded by six sodium ions because of these strong electrostatic attractions. Now, because there's such strong attractions, there's a high melting point for sodium chloride. It takes a lot of energy to overcome these strong electrostatic attractions between the oppositely charged ions. Also, it's worth noting that because the attractions are strong, the ions can't move and therefore can't carry any kind of charge or current through the solid sodium chloride. However, if you can get these ions to move, then they will carry charge. And there's two ways of getting them to move. One of them is to dissolve it in water, so the ions become free to move. And the second is to melt it so that the ions become free to move. In these cases, the uh, sodium chloride solution or molten sodium chloride would conduct electricity. Now magnesium oxide has got a very similar structure to sodium chloride in that each magnesium ion is surrounded by six oxide ions and each oxide ion is surrounded by six magnesiums in this giant ionic structure. Here however because the magnesium ions and the oxide ions have got double charges the attractions are even stronger which means that magnesium oxide has got an even higher melting point than sodium chloride. But, like sodium chloride, if you're able to melt the magnesium oxide, or if you dissolve it in water, then the ions are free to move and it will conduct electricity. But as a solid, because the ions are in fixed positions, it can't conduct electricity. So, generally speaking, some of the properties related to the structure. Now, Ionic structures, generally speaking, have got high melting and boiling points, and that's because of these very strong electrostatic attractions between the positive and negative ions. They've got regular shaped crystals, and that's because of the regular way in which the ions individually surround each other. They are hard because of these strong electrostatic attractions. The ions aren't easily rubbed off, so crystals of ionic substances tend to be quite hard. Uh, they don't conduct electricity when they're solid because the ions can't move, but they do conduct electricity when it's dissolved in water or when it's molten. Here's an exam question. Solid sodium chloride contains ions. Solid sodium chloride won't conduct electricity. Why does it not conduct electricity? Uh, the ions cannot move. But how could you make it conduct electricity? Well, you've got two choices here. You could either dissolve it in water or melt it. You'd only have to write one of these two answers, I'd imagine. 
So it doesn't conduct because the ions aren't mobile or can't move or can only vibrate or because they're in fixed positions. Uh, and you can get it to conduct by either melting it or dissolving it in water. Either of those obviously will do because there's a slash between the two. Don't need both. Here's another question. Sodium chloride, NaCl and magnesium oxide, MgO, are both ionic compounds. Look at the diagram. It shows the giant ionic structure of sodium chloride. Sodium chloride contains sodium ions, Na+, and chloride ions, Cl-. Sodium ions are made from sodium atoms. Describe how uh, the atom loses an electron. Solid sodium chloride does not conduct electricity. Explain why here the ions cannot move, or you could say that they're in fixed positions. And sodium chloride solution does conduct electricity. Explain why the ions are free to move. And a final question. We've got here, the physical properties of a substance are related to its structure and bonding. Magnesium oxide's got a high melting point, carbon dioxide's got a low melting point. Look at this diagram, it shows part of the giant ionic lattice of magnesium oxide. It's got a high melting point, explain why there are strong electrostatic attractions. between the ions which take a lot of energy to break. And here's the answer. You've got strong attraction between the ions or strong electrostatic attraction or strong ionic bonds uh, or uh, strong bonds between the ions but not strong intermolecular forces because of course um, magnesium oxide isn't a molecule, it's a giant structure.